Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the loneliest little abandoned helmet in all of Dunwall, and uh, today it's time for episode probably 11 of my Dishonored Let's Play. So we have one task that we're immediately going to jump to, but before I do that, I just want to mention that by now, I'm recording this in, in your past by several days, however, in your present I should currently have done several uh, or some test streams to make sure everything is working back like it used to, and... Uh, you know, I posted a schedule for resuming actually streaming next week, which I'm looking forward to a whole bunch. I've, a whole bunch. I've really missed streaming quite a lot. Uh, but yes, yeah, so uh, go follow me on Twitch and on Twitter if you want to see announcements about that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so other than that, it's all good, you know? Let's go. Come, come watch me live stream games. It's basically the same as this, except uh, less planned. I don't script anything, but you know, I plan stuff. Did I forget something from my intro? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway. That's not relevant. Oh, no, stupid goddamn. <coughs> <coughs> These guys' legs are very slightly desynchronized and it's bothering me. So the only place left to go is back to Slackjaw to hand in our quest that he gave us. It's weird to talk about it in that kind of, uh, with that kind of terminology. It's not a quest, it's just a guy who asked us to do some stuff in order to help us, you know, continue with the narrative of our plot. I guess it is kind of a quest. So, he will tell us some dumb things. I will talk about why these are dumb things at the time. However, uh, aside from that, it'll be time to just go straight on to the Golden Cat. Let's surprise these guys. Hey, guess what? I can teleport. Wow. You can tell a real hard man because he just, he does not care for magic tricks. He's not... He is not putting up with my bullshit. This guy's not even looking at me. So yeah, um, I've never met a, uh, you know, 1920s street tough who wasn't pleased by the idea of hey, magic. Hey, hey, wait a bit. What just occurred to me? How come it's always me who pay for the whiskeys? Shush up your mouth. You know I can't work out the right number of coin. It's embarrassing. That is an absolutely galactic brain piece of uh, social manipulation that this guy just committed because, my god. It... I'm in awe. I'm astonished. Hey, blow off, chopper. I wish I could lie to my friends that good. Like, the fact that his buddy doesn't even question it. He's not like, well, okay, just give me the money and I'll sort it out then. Like, oh man, I wish I could catch drinks with my friends so easily. I keep slipping back into old-timey British terminology. What's up, Slacky? What's this? Information from my missing guy. Let's have a listen. Such a weird phrase. Information from my missing guy. Slackjaw. It's me, Crowley. I'm making this in case I don't make it back. He was right. There is someone once you did. Wants to take over the distillery and the whole Bottle Street game. And you'll never believe who it is, neither. At first I did. That's why it's taken me so long. I wanted to be sure and... What's that? Hard! No! No! So Crowley's dead. Too bad. He was one of my best men. Still, you and me had a deal, and Slackjaw never goes back on a deal. Take this key. It ain't for the Golden Cat, no. This key's for the captain's chair. A hotel abandoned since the plague gutted this part of town. Take the stairs to the top. You can use the roof to get into the Golden Cat brothel. See that? Slackjaw keeps a bargain. Just as good as the men who run the city. Maybe a little better. You think about that. Now maybe we can help each other out again. I could get rid of the Pendletons for you, quiet-like and without killing them. But you gotta do something for me in return. The cat's having a big reopening tonight. Lot of money clients. Including an arts dealer named of Bunting. He's got particular tastes, or so I've been told by some of the ladies. Got some pretty fancy stuff locked away at his place. And the only thing preventing me from nabbing all that loot is the combination to his safe. 
Of course, the Pendletons have been camped out there for months, too. Not sure why. So that means a lot of the City Watch and other soldier types. Bring me that combination, my mass friend. And then I take care of the Pendleton brothers. Just like that. You ain't never even gonna touch them. And I promise, I won't kill them, and no one will ever see them again. Now, if that ain't a deal, Slackjaw don't know what is. You know, it's funny that they call him Slackjaw when he clearly cannot shut the fuck up no matter how long you wait. My god, he talks a lot. Uh, actually, maybe that is why they call him Slackjaw. You'd think it would be a very muscular jaw by this point, though. Let me just check. Nope, we're good. There's nothing left for me to grab around here. So, this makes no sense for quite a few reasons. I don't think that Corvo would take him up on this offer, simply because he's met this guy today, and in fact robbed him last week. Um, last week? Last night, even. Um, under those circumstances, why would he trust this? This is the most important thing Corvo has ever done. Corvo is rescuing his goddamn daughter. Um, well, his, 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 uh, wink, ward, wink. And um, I really do not think that he would trust someone else to see these things done. Also, the circumstances of him being told this is just... Would you trust a man who said, don't worry, I can just magically make them disappear? It's not anything you have to worry about, you know? You want these guys gone, they'll be gone, they won't be killed, they'll just vanish. As if they never existed. He's asking for a lot of trust from Corvo, you know what I mean? I'm so glad he stopped moving. Knocked out bodies in this game are incredibly fragile. It's very, very easy for them to just flop bonelessly off of ledges and die. If I do this right... Well, no, I did it wrong. Okay. Well, waste not want that. So it's not necessary to knock these guys out, but they are weepers, so they will attack you if you get too close. And we don't want that to happen because we don't want to catch the plague. Can we get this guy, or is he...? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so... I'll, I'll get back to Slackjaw's plan in a second. First off, I just want to briefly talk about the epidemiology of Weepers, because it's really interesting. There are these hints in the game, and later, at full-on con... The hell is the Confirmation? Wow, that was a weird word to forget. Uh, there is confirmation later in the game that this plague was introduced on purpose to... by... That's not really relevant, it's just that this guy clearly shot himself because his wife left, or... Well, I'm not even sure. It's weird. It says, hey, come join me in Sokonos when you can. and But he's clearly shot himself based on the uh, environmental storytelling. So... A handsome one with the beautiful dark eyes. I just want to tell him I'm doing my part. Yes, Granny Rags is doing her part. Tell him, won't you? If you see him. Sure, Granny, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him. Um... The fuck was I talking about? Oh, weepers, yes. So it's a really weirdly multi-staged disease. So you become infected. Once you're infected, uh, you begin coughing after a, after a certain amount of coughing, a certain amount of time, a week more. You eventually... I mean, who hasn't, really? Shit, I actually had men beg to marry me. Um, I'm just that delightful. Anyway, the the thing is, they kind of have this bizarre, this bizarre thing. You start coughing, then you start bleeding from the eyes. Once you start bleeding from the eyes, you will die. Death is certain. There is really nothing you can do to escape it. But, um, at that stage, you also start coughing up bugs. like you get elixir. We've been on half rations for a week. I ain't catching the plague. Hand it over. No, please, it's for my baby. He needs it. It's us that needs it. If the City Watch gets sick, how are we gonna protect you? Protect me? You grab her, I'll get the- Hey, you. Get lost. This here's a private party. That was help. supposed to be more of Sir, a, uh... Please help. That was supposed to be a bit more of a cool kickoff to this. But, you know, this works fine too. Thank you, thank you, sir. You saved me. How can I thank you? I have nothing. Wait, take this. It's the backdoor service key to Bunting's house, the art dealer on the main street. 
I used to work for him, you know, before the plague. He's let all his servants go, but he's still there. Probably hoping he'll be able to sell something from that safe of his. I don't know what he has left, but it's all I have to offer you. Please take it. So that's nice of her, and that saves us having to do a uh, irritating side quest a bit later on. Still, oh hey, never noticed that before. You see what I mean? Money is just hidden everywhere. Anyway, uh, once we've put these men in the trash where they clearly belong. Bye guys, have fun in the uh, flooded district. So yeah, we should definitely head back to Bunting's uh, house. I'm going to do that in a minute after I have finished exploring this zone, which I should be able to do deathlessly. Anyway, my plan was to um, throw a bottle at one guy, dart the other guy, and then uh, stab the first guy, but you know. Uh, we all make a lot of plans in life that we don't get to uh, see to come to a fruition, and that's okay. That's just how things are. How many of these do I have? Eight runes. I can, in fact, get level two bend time. By far the most powerful spell in the game. The other spells are more fun, um, but bend time just lets you do literally anything. Let's check these out as well real quick. Have I gotten any better ones for sneaking? I'm not going to be doing any drop assassinations, so that's irrelevant. I don't want to be shot at in the first place, so that's irrelevant. I don't have possessions, so that's irrelevant. Move forward slightly faster while sneaking, that's great. Having your weapons out doesn't slow you, that's also great. Uh, adrenaline is irrelevant, adrenaline is irrelevant, and slightly more health, sure, why not. So we've actually got three useful ones now, which is better than having no useful ones. I'm very flush with uh, magic potion, which is what I'm going to keep calling that, even though- am I really full of these? Okay. Oh god, it's running off. That was extremely close. Um, I very, very nearly got spotted then. So the obvious advantage of stopping time over slowing time is that when you stop time you can just walk straight in front of people and they won't see you. Uh, in slow time, if people see you, that's still a problem. It's just that the reactions are very slow, obviously, because it's slow. Anyway, I was definitely talking about something a minute ago, but I don't remember what it was. Oh yeah, the epidemiology of the rat plague. So you catch the rat plague from rats. That, that's definitely true. That's an unambiguously true thing. Let's see, there's a bone charm over there. I think that's in this house, maybe? And there's Things no others. So the only thing left to do is to head back. I should have come here afterwards. Oh well. So the original plan for this was that I would do the, uh, I would rob the bunting. Hmm, will this work? Oh hey, that's, that guy's a senior veteran. Hmm. They have a conversation if you get close, but I'm probably not going to do that. Who dares wins? Fantastic. So yeah, um, I actually didn't know until very recently when I was doing my, like, pre- recording playthrough of this game, because I ran through this whole game in a, in a couple days before I started recording originally. But yeah, you can just get over the top of this. You don't have to go through the, the dangerous archway or any of the other dangerous locations. You can just, just zoom. It's fine. So yeah, uh, there's this whole side quest about going into the Golden Cat, getting Bunting's, uh, getting Bunting's, what do you call it, his uh, safe combination and then coming back. That's long. Well, That's slow. I can't be bothered to do that. You know. Poor bastard. Stuff can't be worth nothing, can they? Not a chance. I think I remember having seen this painting at my grandmother's place. She wasn't no. Hang on a second. I think I've gotten a bit confused. I'm going to ignore these two philistines talking about how the work of the greatest painter who's ever lived is uh, total garbage and irrelevant. Let me just check. Let's see. Mission clues. The art dealer provided a key. Oh God damn it. It's dumb that I got that wrong. Whoa. Huh? What the? <laughs> Did the guys downstairs hear that? I'm really sorry, guy. I was a little bit too slow on the trigger. I, if I'd had the crossbow out, like I keep saying I should, uh, that man would be alive now. Still, that's what life is like, I suppose. Oh, um, oh, eh, oh, jeez, um, 
Oh wait, he was dead already, it's fine, I don't care. So yeah, there's actually three Sokolov portraits here, which I will be uh, gathering when we come back because my dumbass just forgot how this works. Yeah, I, you do have to do the bunting thing. You can't um, trick your way around it. She just gives you uh, another way to get in there, which is also unnecessary because you can easily climb up there without doing that. I suppose that key is there for people who don't get into the whole, like, climby, jumpy side of this game, but it's such a climby, jumpy game, it's very strange to me that you wouldn't, you know? It's kind of what it's all about. Attention, citizens of Dunwall. Now, if I wait for my moment, I should be able to get through here without wasting any magic. Actually, all of the patrollers have come over here. So yeah, um, once weepers start coughing up bugs, that's when I started to get confused. So I, what I wonder is if maybe this plague is parasitic in nature. What if... None of this is expounded on in the game as far as I remember, but what if... This should be good. Go fast on this. Oh shit! I think I'm okay. I think I'm good. I think we're fine. I think this is not a problem at all. Well, that was more spotted than I usually like to be, but at least it wasn't a problem. Um, how did I forget there was another guy? Um, shit. This is disastrous. Oh, there's so many of them. That's the other advantage to stopping time. Um, Alright, I want this, and I'm getting the fuck out of here. You know what? I don't even care if those rats eat them. Not my problem anymore. <laughs> this is what happens when you chase random people into tenements for no reason. Oh uh, boy, oh boy. Well, at least I didn't kill them. So, you know, they've got that going for them. Whichever of them survived the rat swarm. So, yeah, here we are in the Golden Cat. Um, let's take a little bit to sort of survey the surroundings. But, yeah, so my suspicion is that this is actually a parasitic plague, not a, a virus or a a bacterial disease or any of that kind of thing. I think that the... Um, I think that it's got some kind of multi-stage thing. I think that, you know, the rats have maybe um, larval, larval, larvae or eggs. They probably have eggs on them. The, you know, people get in contact with the rats, they get the eggs on their skin, they get the egg, they swallow the eggs, they ingest the eggs, then the eggs infect you, you start coughing and spluttering. Uh, and then you start coughing up a whole bunch of flies. That is the things hatching. That is those gross little, uh, gross little parasite babies inside you. Then, um, after you're all, uh, all out of them, you die. Rats are attracted to your corpse because you're dead. The flies, uh... Oh, yep, there we go. He said he saw shit like that, and much, much worse. Even if you're right, what do we do? Send a fleet to the continent. Burn the whole country down. That'd show them. So this guy's talking about a conspiracy theory. He thinks that um, the rats are from Pandisia, which is true. Um, and he thinks they were sent here on purpose to destroy the nation or whatever, and that they should strike back. However, Pandisia is also referred to pretty consistently as being an, an empty, wild continent with nothing in it except for, like, ancient ruined temples and nothing else, um, and some, like, uncontacted distant tribes. There's this inconsistency throughout the game, because there are other characters who talk about this kind of thing, and there is exactly one reference, and I'll talk about this at some other point in more detail, but... There's exactly one reference in this game to the institution of slavery. And I think that if you're going to have a game set in, you know, the late 1800s, how can... You know, it's an industrialized society. The existence of slavery was one of the greatest sins committed in history. Or, you know, the, the Atlantic slave trade, specifically. It's just, it's one of the worst things that's ever happened in human history. And it had a profound effect on the society that committed it. it is inextricably linked to a great deal of historical events that resulted in the form of this society. So if you're going to have a society that shares a form with that, I think ignoring it completely is historical revisionism, kind of. Uh, as I said, I have more complex thoughts on this that I'll talk about another time, but that's basically 
uh, what that makes me think of at this instance. And there's this weird kind of like two-mindedness about it. There is there is no consistent decision over whether they're going to have this empty continent that was, you know, where everybody died out hundred years, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, or whether they're going to have this continent full of, you know, quote unquote tribes people who are um, mistreated or abducted or taken here for slavery or whatever. It's very strange to make one single gesture of this. Anyway, that all of that, you know, gloominess aside, let's talk about the golden cat because the golden cat is gorgeous. Look at this delightful Art Deco building. And I said it wrong, it's not Art Deco, it's Art Nouveau. A lot of people get these backwards, I get the names transposed because my brain doesn't work very well, but I do know what I mean. Um, it's the first example of the true like, ideal of immersive sim level design. We see this hinted at in the previous chapter with um, Campbell's uh, offices, but in that it still very much sticks to that kind of like in through the front, explore the building, out through the back linearity, whereas this gives you a whole entire building with all of the things that it's sensible for a building like this to have. It makes sense as a structure, it makes sense where it is in the city, it makes sense how it's laid out on its interior, and it has a beautiful aesthetic style. These verdigreed rooftops are just gorgeous to look at, and the polished sandstone, or limestone rather. It's one of my favourite locations in any game, really. And it just, it fits its style so well. The only, th the only thing I would say is that um, in a city that is heavily based on um, Edwardian London and Edinburgh, this is absolutely a building that has been stolen from Paris of the same era. Just look at it, it's beautiful. So, um, having, you know, kind of gushed endlessly about how nice this building is, I want to talk about how well designed it is. As you approach it from this angle, which is the ideal angle to approach it, this the rooftops always have an advantage in Dishonored because height is so valuable to stealth, but even though from the street you get this picturesque look. You can see the river from the back, possible means of escape, you can see multiple points of entry, you can see this um, this veranda terrace up here, you can see the main entrance, you can very notably see one open window. The advantage of that is in a lot of games, you, you see windows, and windows are just kind of part of the geometry, they're not something you can interact with. However, with an inter immersive sim game, the, the whole purpose of the game is being able to interact with these environments realistically. It is a high degree of environmental verisimilitude, which is supposed to make you feel as if you're there, so that your ideas should work as if you were really doing the things you're doing in the game. That's why that open window is so important. That tells the player, these windows are not just props. These are windows you can open and close and sneak around and use. Similarly, this guy on the roof shows you, you know, you need to be aware. You need to keep in mind that this place is going to be full of guards and they're going to be in places you can't predict. The access to the river shows you there might be a whole second side to this building that you can use for your plans. It's just perfect. You, you kind of come through here and you instinctively get this sense of opportunity and kind of diversity of opportunity and all these different things you might or might not be able to do in this area. I think it's great. I think it's delightful. Another example of some of the uh, very common uh, dialogue exchanges. So, yeah, um, my tonsil is actually swelling up so bad it's making me dif making it difficult for me to talk. So I'm going to end this episode here, and uh, I guess beg my doctor to please look at my goddamn tonsils. It's four times the size of a normal tonsil. Why won't you do anything? Um, you, you guys don't need to hear about my medical problems. That's besides the point. Let's just let's just have another look at this delightful building. And I will see you next time. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one tweet micro reviews. Or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.